So now we're going to look at regression analysis, um, which is when we estimate one variable based on another. Um, so the variable that we'll be estimating is our y value, our dependent variable, and the variable being used to make that estimate or predict the y value is the independent variable or our x variable. Um, so the relationship between them will be linear and our regression equation will basically be an equation that generates a line on our graph that best sum summarizes all of our data. Um, so this is the least squares principle. Um, our objective is to use the data so that it's the best fit for the relationship between the two variables. So as you can see in the second graph, all of these different, you can make an argument for all of these different lines that somebody visually just drew by hand, um, but the best way to find the line of best fit is going to be a regression line. Um, so it's the least squares principle. Basically what this principle is trying to do is minimize the distance between our actual, actual Y values and our predicted Y values. So if you look at these graphs down below, the dots that are perfectly on the line are our predicted values of Y. And then the dots surrounding the line are our actual Y values. And we're trying to minimize the distance between these two dots. Um, so to solve for this, um, this is the equation that we'll use. It's Y hat equals a plus bx. Um, y is our estimated value of y for a selected value of x. A is a constant or an intercept, and b is the slope of the, of the fitted line, and then x is the value um, that we'll input into the equation. So the formulas for a and b are down below. We'll use those here in a second. But essentially what this equation aims to do is for any value of x, we can input that into the equation and it will give us the predicted y value that we should get. Um, so for example, if our x value for our height and shoe size example was someone who's six feet tall, then our predicted y value would say someone who's six feet tall, it's predicted that they would have a shoe size of 11 or something like that. Um, so this is an example that the textbook goes through. So if you want more practice, you can play around with these numbers. But I, um, we're going to create the regression line from the data that we were working with earlier. So these are the equations that we're going to use. Um, obviously, if you want to find A, you need to find B first. So if you get a question that says, what is the intercept value for this regression line? First, you need to find B, and then you'll be able to plug it in to find A. So we're going to use the information that we found earlier. So our R value is negative 0 0.2045. Sx equals 41.2046. Sy equals 11.345. So these will get plugged into our equation. So B equals negative 2.045 times our SY divided by our SX value. So you can just plug these into your calculator and they will give you a B value of negative 0 0.0563. So now we can use that to find our A value. So first we need our Y bar, which we calculated earlier as being 32.4. And then we're going to subtract our B value that we just calculated. But first we need to multiply our v B value to our X bar, which in this case is 1,424.4. So this is going to give us A as equaling 112.4. 622, which means our final regression equation is y hat equals 112.622 minus 0.0563x. Um, so a couple things we can tell from this equation, our slope value is relatively small and negative, which makes sense because we had a 
weak negative correlation. So it makes sense that our slope is going to be almost zero because the line's not going to be very steep. Um, if we had a significantly strong relationship, you would expect this slope to be much higher. Um, so just to, just in case it helps to see it visually, um, I can put the regression line on our scatter plot from earlier. So if we add the line, as you can see here, it's not, it's not very sloped. It's a pretty flat line. Um, our variables are pretty spread out, which makes sense because we had a weak correlation. Um, this is what the trend line would look like on a graph. And then if we just wanted to double check our work, we can see that this is our regression equation. So it's the same slope and constant that we solved for earlier. Okay, and this is them um, showing you how they found their regression line with their data from earlier. Um, you can do the same thing that we did earlier where we tested for significance. You can do a hypothesis test with the slope of the, the slope of the line. Um, so if you don't reject the null hypothesis, you can conclude that there is no relationship between the two variables and uh, vice versa for the alternate. And then when we're testing the null hypothesis, our test statistic, test statistic is going to use n minus two degrees of freedom. So for their example that we can go through, um, this is beta represents the estimate of their slope um, and their, these are their null and alternate hypothesis. So it's important to note the direction because this is greater than or equal to zero. It's going to be a one tail, um, one tail test on the distribution. So it's only going to look at the right side. Um, the level of significance is 0 0.05. So we can find the test statistic, which ends up being 1.771. So you would reject the null hypothesis if T is greater than 1.771. So then you calculate your own T statistic um, using this equation down here. So T equals B minus zero divided by the standard error of B, um, which you get 6.205. So they can clearly, uh, can clearly reject it. So now talking about the regression equations ability to predict, um, in their example earlier, the, this was the regression line that they generated. So if they were to, for example, put 84 as their X value for the number of sales calls, their Y hat value is 41.8704. However, they had two employees with 84 sales calls, but they only sold 30 and 24. So how accurate is the regression equation as a predictor? Um, the same holds true for our equation because we have a fairly weak correlation um, when we input an x value it's going to be our predicted value is going to be very far from the line just because our data has a pretty weak relationship um, so we'll be able to use the standard error of estimate to predict this in the um, to determine how much variation there is around the regression line, um, which is what this is where we'll pick up on Thursday. So if you have any questions about what we've gone over so far, feel free to email me. Um, but other than that, this is where we'll pick up on Thursday. Thank you.